My name is Walium and I'm the chef owner of Restaurant Ibit. Restaurant Ibit is a Nanyang inspired contemporary Chinese restaurant. Ibit means coming from the same source. We remember our sources where we came from. Most of us came from China and we take inspiration from those sources. But we understand that we may not have grown up in that part of the world. We grew up in a place called Singapore. We've been exposed to many different cultures, cuisines. The food is a mixture of East and West. I'd say that it's neither, neither East nor West at the same time. Because if you look at the dishes that we are doing, you can see components and techniques that are reminiscent of both. But they don't really squarely belong in either category either. I do agree that there is an East and West influence, but it is not East, it is not West, it is Nanyang, and it's ours. I started cooking at a very young age. I'd be in the kitchen helping my mum. My mum was quite a formidable cook. Lots of local food, foods from Malaysia. My mum's from Sarawak. Through those years, I was exposed to cooking. Started picking up a knife, you know, practicing. I started to buy lots of books, start reading. I didn't really consider cooking as a profession. I did think about it at one point, and then my Asian parents slammed me quite badly. That was that, I went to law school. While training as a lawyer, I really wanted to still be part of the industry because I found F&B highly seductive. It was such a lifestyle difference, you know, from the 9 to 5 that so many people in Singapore have. Uh, to be part of that small community, to live that very almost reckless life where you count your sleep by the minutes, not the hours. And that was something that was really quite attractive to me. I'd be training in the law firm and then at night I'd go work in a cocktail bar. So Towards the end of my legal training, the opportunity to join MasterChef Asia came up. And me being such a hardcore fan, they had put out the calls for uh, auditions and it really didn't take me long. Uh, I answered the call. I think I was quite giddy the moment I clicked the email and it said, you have been accepted into the final 15. And I'm like, wow, that means you actually will be on the show. Because before then, there are many other rounds of auditioning where it's not on camera. But it was a very surreal experience. I actually did not go in planning to win. <laughs> I went in because I was a fanboy, because I was a geek for the show, and I just loved that competition format. It didn't occur to me that I was pretty close to winning till I was in the top five. Before then, it was just getting by, getting by, getting by. Just don't get eliminated, don't get eliminated. Enjoy the show. But by the time I hit the top five, that was when it, it hit me. You are pretty close to the end you could go all the way. When I found out I won, there was a moment of quiet for about five minutes where I just sat down and went, hmm, it's done. You know, I did this and it's done. Five minutes later, the phone exploded, the emails exploded, lots of interviews, lots of work opportunities. My life did change quite drastically. I wanted to give myself some time after the show to travel a little bit train under different chefs, see different kitchen systems and just kind of exploring all the opportunities. I don't think two years is enough time to open a restaurant. Other chefs um, at my age spend years, decades to build up the experience before they open and even then they'll tell you that they're not ready. With that in mind, knowing that no one is ever ready, open lah! Would I like to have trained a little bit more? Yes. Would I love to have gone on uh, more stages, and more internships? Surely. But I think it was about time and just work doubly hard to make sure that this restaurant survives in this very competitive market in Singapore. I do think there's some stigma coming from a TV show that is so widely popular. But there are certain groups of people uh, within uh, the FME industry that don't really think that I'm part of the industry for real. A chef even uh, told me once, you know, just having a couple of drinks that you don't deserve to wear a chef's jacket. It hasn't been easy. I struggled for a full year to battle those demons. I think some of those demons are still inside must get rid of him. But having said that, you have the haters, you also have the, those who support you. So it's good when you enter this industry, you do need a lot of support. I think for a while, I wanted to prove them wrong. Maybe a small part of me still does want to prove them wrong, but I realised that it's just wasted breath and wasted energy. And I'm just here to do my own thing. I'm here to run a sustainable business. And as long as I step on no one's shoes, as long as no one gets hurt, then I'm okay. They can say what they want. Everything that's happened in the past 2-3 years 
seems like it's happening so fast, but yet it feels like almost a lifetime ago. <laughs> I'm very, very hopeful for the future. We are still new as a restaurant. So far, the reception has been good. People enjoy the space, enjoy the food, enjoy the service. We just have to build upon that because I think that's a very strong foundation to start on. It's been a great experience. It's been a wacky experience. Lots of highs, many more lows, but if I had to do it all over again, I would.